we bless your name. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise and power belongs to you, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your favor, your loving kindness, your tender mercy, O oh God. We thank you for watching over us and protecting us during this day, God. Lord, we just want to bless you. Just lift your hand and bless Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to bless your name, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we give you praise and glory and honor, Lord. Holy Spirit, come, come. Come and over in this place this evening, O oh God. We invite your presence, O oh God, as we humble ourselves under your mighty hand, my God. Come, Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Come and take your place, my Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we bless your name, my God. We bless your name. We glorify the name that is above every name, O oh God. And the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord, oh God. You are wounded for our transgression. You are bruised for our iniquity, oh God. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes we are healed, oh God. You died, you were buried, oh God. You rose again from the dead. And you are ascended on high and coming again, my Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we bless praise your name. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Continue to praise the Lord. Amen. It is a good thing to give the Lord praise. It's a good thing to worship the Lord. It's a good thing to exalt and magnify the King of Kings. We are here to praise the Lord. Give thanks unto his name. Thy loving kindness is better than life. We are here to magnify the Lord. We are here to glorify him. We are here to tell the world to see what the Lord has done for us. The walls came down. The walls tumbled down. And we are liberated. We are free to exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Give Jesus Christ a hand up of praise for he is worthy. He is worthy of all the praise. He is worthy of all the honor. And he is worthy of all the glory. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. We bless his holy name. Praise ye the Lord. Give thanks unto his name. Praise ye the Lord, our oh God. Give thanks unto his name. Praise ye the Lord. Give thanks unto his name.
happening in our nation today. Amen. We exalt the King of glory, the Lord God who is strong and mighty. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You are God alone. You are a God that is created by human hands. But you are the God that created the hands of human this evening, God. We depend upon you. You do not depend upon us, Lord. You are not a God in need of anything we can give. By your plans, that's just the way it is, Lord. You are God alone before time began. Lord, you are on your throne. And we worship you. And right now, in good times and in bad times, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Your eyes run to and fro the earth, beholding the good and the evil. Today, Lord, we trust in you and we depend upon you, Lord. For great is the Lord, God Almighty. You are unchangeable. You are unshakable. You are unstoppable. That's what you are, Lord. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your that's just the way it is. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give. By your plans, that's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad.
lift your hands and just worship Him tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship You. You are God alone. Always on your throne, Master, we worship You. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you tonight, Father. Mighty God, we praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We exalt your name. Jesus. Your voice is like thunder, Lord. Your eyes like a flame of fire. My God, I worship you. Your voice like the sound of many waters, Lord. For who is like unto you? Worthy to be praised, Lord. The only one worthy in heaven today. And we give you praise, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Lord, Father, we exalt your name, Lord. We appreciate your passion for your church, Lord. Your passion to save. Your passion to deliver. Your passion to set free tonight. Your passion for our souls, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your saving grace. Thank you, Lord, for the unlimited dimension of your love, your unconditional love, Lord. You, sister, the throne of glory, be magnified, Lord, be glorified, Father. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Lift it up on high, Lord, as we salute you tonight. For your great love that you have bestowed towards us, Lord. We believe. We believe. We believe. The only true Son of the living God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Savior, to you, we give praise in adoration in your holy sanctuary we exalt you Lord we exalt you Jesus we magnify your name and we break every feather and we shatter the works of darkness let your name prevail let your glory Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. My Redeemer, my exalted Savior, the keeper of our souls, the deliverer. Hallelujah. I worship you. My exalted Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God alone all by yourself none can compare with your beauty Lord we praise your name
tonight, Lord. We receive all the praise we give unto you, Father. Hallelujah. And throw yourself in the praises of the gift of the night. We exalt you in glory, Master. Get thrown in the glory that we give to you tonight. All the praise, all the honor, all the glory. You, the might and strength and dominion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let your presence fill this place. Let your anointing fill this house. Let your glory fill our lives and fill this house, Lord, tonight. Let your name be magnified, Lord Jesus. We crown you with honor and glory. Thank you, Lord, for the blessed hope that we have tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We look unto you, the author and finish of our faith, our salvation, our protection, our provision. We thank you for having preeminence over our lives, Lord. Supplying every need, surrounding us with your wall of fire and divine protection, Lord. Sealing us us by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. We give you praise. Touch everyone in this house, Lord. Every person that is watching tonight, wherever they are on this planet, my Lord God, breathe upon them a fresh anointing of victory, success, joy, peace, hope. and confidence knowing that your love never failed you will never leave us nor forsake us and you're coming together soon thank you father for your presence tonight bless the remaining part of this service and everything that will be said and done be inspired from your throne as we yield to you lord speak to all of us tonight we wait in your presence and all the people said amen and amen. Give the Lord our God, Almighty God, a great hand tonight and welcome His presence. Come on, give Him a good hand tonight. He's, he deserves the glory. He deserves the glory. Amen and amen. Be kind enough to turn to the person next to you and share that love and share that embrace tonight and make that person feel loved, special, and appreciated tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, praise His glorious name. And you may have your seats when you're through. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Did you enjoy that worship tonight? Praise the Lord. And we well, give the worship team a good God bless you. We appreciate your great job. You're doing a great job. God bless every one of you for your commitment to making things happen for his honor and for his glory hallelujah this is the best thing you've done for the week praise the lord hallelujah. isn't god good you're glad to be in the house of the lord tonight amen good to see every one of you present tonight in god's presence in god's house and it's always nice to see god's children in church during the week we when you come to church during the week you're saying to caesar you can't get all of me you're not going to get all of me. I'm going to have something reserved in me for the Lord. Amen. And that's what God wants from us. For us to, to go the extra mile and be a blessing to his kingdom.
Praise the Lord. For those of you tuned in tonight, thank you very much for joining us. And tonight, the Lord will not disappoint you. He has a word for you. And keep, keep your ear tuned in and your heart tuned in, your spirit tuned in to the Lord. He's going to minister to you by His grace. And let's put our hands together and welcome those watching tonight, wherever you are. God bless you and thank you for joining us. We love you. Stay tuned. Amen. How many of you love the Lord tonight? How many are you willing to go the extra mile tonight? See, it gets a little... I want to thank God for His grace, His saving grace. How many of God still saved? He still saves, amen. Amen. I thank God for His grace today. You know, I have to share this with you. I went to the hospital today to visit Brother Anna's dad. And, you know, doctor, you know what the doctor says, that there's not, not more they can do. But it was, you know, I, I got this phone call and I, I felt compelled to go. So I, was, I, was think, I was thinking, well, he was, he's going to come home and I'm going to go visit him and visit the family and pray with them. But when I got this phone call this morning, I, I felt led, I have to go. So I took Dr. Price and myself and we went and met Brother Anil there. I called him, I said, I'm going on. So he decided he's going to join me. So we, three of us went. And met his dad there. He, he was out of it. He was just with all his stuff hooked up to him on his body. And then, he, you know, the nurse came to make some adjustment while we were standing there on the bed. And all of a sudden, the bed just dropped like that. And he woke up. And I was glad he woke up. And that was not by chance. We got a chance to minister to him. And, you know, very sim in, a, in a very simple manner, I put my hands on his forehead, and I spoke to him, and I, I, I was just following the direction of the Holy Spirit, because in a situation like that, you just don't know how to pray. You know, you just don't know, you don't know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit, he has, he helps you with groanings that cannot be uttered. And then I, I laid my hands on him, his eyes open, and I said, listen, I know you can't talk much, because you've got all this thing on, on your you know, breathing apparatus. And I said to him, I said, I said, you can hear me. You, you, you know what I'm saying? And he was conscious. And I said to him, I said, I said, I'm going to pray with you. And I want you to agree. If you agree with me at the end of this prayer, I just want you to say amen. Say amen. And I prayed. And while I was praying, I said, Lord, I refuse to let this man go until he accepts you. Lord, we're not going to let this man leave this world without accepting you. We refuse to allow that to happen. So I was asking God, praying and asking God to convict him while praying. You know, because while you're praying, you're using words, but your mind is running fast and thinking. And I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, he... he you, at the point of extremity is your opportunity. It doesn't matter what a man does all his life. Your word says, whosoever, whosoever mean the drunkard, the dope addict, the drug addict, the prostitute, the harlot, anybody, any religion, anybody, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord with a conviction in your heart shall be saved shall be saved. And I prayed with him, prayed all the pray all I could have prayed. I just prayed with him. And when I was through praying in Jesus' name, I said, now, as I finished praying, you know what he said as I finished praying? He said, in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Three times to confirmation. And I was standing there not really stunned, but just amazed at the grace of God. It's, that's why it's called amazing grace. Amazed at the grace of God because He will give anybody a last chance because He's not willing that any shall perish, but that all shall come to repentance. And I believe He genuinely, genuinely meant that prayer. Meant that prayer. Accepted the Lord. Genuinely. Let's give the Lord a hand for His glory.
One soul. One more soul saved from hell. Man may look at his past and judge him, but God is looking at his future to welcome him. Amen? How many appreciate the goodness of God? That's what the grace of God can do. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why churches and institutions are set up in this world to save men, to preach the gospel so men can be saved from that place, that dirty, nasty place called hell. I don't want to climax that teaching tonight. Now you cannot stop preaching on hell and you cannot preach the entire preach hell the series you know you cannot preach hell the, in, the entirety or exhaust the, the, the topic on hell so uh, but I want you I want you to open your spirit tonight and I want you to to receive I'm going to just climax this night and it's not going to be it's not going to be things you, strange things you never heard before okay but I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you don't want to go to hell okay 10 reasons why you don't want to go to hell Amen? How many of you want those 10 reasons? You, know, I could, you could just say, there's one reason why I don't want to go to hell, but there are 10 reasons tonight, okay, why you do not want to go to hell. Now, we have gone through a lot of scriptures, and we have gone through a lot in the teaching uh, on hell, you know, and it blessed my heart today, every time I think of Brother Anna's father, you know, confessing that, you know, I thank God he took him out of everything, for the past, how many, how, how long he's been there? A week? About a week. And then, you know, somehow cleanses his body from all this stuff that he used to, he was used to before. So the decision he made today was in the soundness of mind. Amen. And the whole idea today was, Lord, you know, hell lost the battle. I left the hospital, I was driving, I said, hell, you lost the battle. You'll be a loser forever. And you know, one by one, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna plunder hell and populate heaven. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. We're gonna plunder hell and populate heaven. Because you don't want your worst enemy to go to hell. And we live in a day and age now. You see what's happening in our nation. This nation is under siege. We, we, we it's troubling to see what's going on today. Every day, people are going to hell. Every day, people are dying today. And you, you could be driving innocently, and you could be dead next moment whether traveling in a vehicle, whether by, by a stray bullet, by whatever. But the, the criminal elements today, it's, they, they are increasing in this world. And, uh, the, the, you know, the chances for survival is very, very, very grim. And we need to understand that, that we, have, we have a blessed hope and we don't care about the worst case scenario concerning our lives because we know in whom we believe and we are persuaded that he's able to keep us against that day. And we know what could be the worst case scenario. In my, in my life, the worst case scenario is that I have to leave my wife and my, my daughter and my, my, my ministry here. You know, that's, my, that's the worst case scenario. But I know what the, the thing is I'm going to be in heaven. Amen. But you want to enjoy your family. You want to enjoy your loved ones. You want to enjoy your ministry. There's so much you want to do for the Lord. So we have no fear when coming to that. Amen. But the biggest fear we have now is to know somebody's going to hell. To know that somebody's on their way to hell, you know, it's a scary thing because you know what they're going to meet. How many know what they're going to experience? This is what we are concerned, this is why we're here tonight. Now, we, this is why the Lord has given us a scriptural mandate. You know, <clears throat> as I said Sunday, this is not a religious thing, you see. And, and we don't understand that, that God, is, God is in the restoration business to reconcile and bring men back onto himself because hell was prepared for Satan and his fallen angels that became demonic spirits. And God never wanted man to go there. But those who follow Satan and the fallen angels, that's where they're going to end up. <clears throat> so the gospel has to be preached. So the whole Bible is about restoration. There are 66 books here written about God's plan of restoration. This is a He's a loving God, a caring God, because He knows what hell is like, the consequences for the rebellion of sin. Salvation is man's deliverance from the bondage and penalty of sin, which is death, eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. And we need to understand what is the scriptural mandate that God has given to all of us as believers in Christ. We are not just hooked up to some religious organization where we are trying to live a good life to stay away from bad things. That's not what this is all about. We have been redeemed 
from corruptible things. We have been redeemed to serve the Lord, our God, to come back into a relationship with Him so we can escape the wrath and the corruption that is in the world through lust and end up in a Christless eternity. Amen. So we have to take this thing very seriously because life is getting shorter and shorter and shorter every day. Amen. And I have, I'm standing here before you today with absolutely no desire, zero desire for earthly and temporal things. Because, because the time has come now for us to focus on the things that has eternal values. We cannot be like the Egyptians. When you die, you can take some stuff with you and use them after death. We cannot go with all this religious belief that is destroying our thought pattern. Let's go with what the Word of God says. We have a scriptural mandate tonight. Amen? A scriptural mandate on hell. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews 9, 27 says, As it is appointed unto, ma unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. After this is appointed unto men once to die, but after this what? The judgment. And verse 20 says, it says, So Christ once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto him that look for him shall he appear a second time without sin unto salvation. Understand that. Understand that. When Jesus came the first time, he came, to took, he came and took all of our sins upon him. When he comes back this time, it's not to take sin upon himself. But to take those who exchanged their sins for his righteousness. And for those who have received his righteousness. Amen. He's come back for the righteous. Without sin unto salvation. So he's come back for the righteous to deliver them. That salvation is a perpetual deliverance where you have been delivered and you'll be delivered from this earthly corruption. And so throughout the study on hell that we have done, I've given you what the Lord God Almighty teaches on the subject. And there are many, many more scriptures. But I hope that you, that, 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 that you can see the reality of this place. This place of judgment. The judgment of on sin and I, I have not shunned to give you the whole counsel of God these past few uh, sessions and now let us look let's look back and see the scriptural mandate given to to us in this study now now let me just recap some of the things that we learned number one we learned that hell will be a place of pain and sorrow for the loss pain and sorrow for the loss we learned that okay number two we learn that hell was created by God and not the devil. It was created by God for the devil. Amen? Thirdly, we noted that the flames of hell are forever and will never burn out. Or the people or whatever is being burnt will never be annihilated but will burn forever. We established that from the scripture, from the scripture and from the context of the scripture. And fourthly, we saw those who are candidates for this place called hell. Okay? We have many scriptures we go, I'm not going to go through them again, all right? And if you want to know what they are, you can get the whole series, okay? And not that you want to sell CDs, I don't care about selling, if you want to get it, get it, okay? And fifthly, we learn about the five compartments, about the five compartments of hell. <clears throat> and one, so, somebody say, well, Pastor, why are you teaching on hell? I'm teaching on hell because, because we need to let people know where they're heading if they fail to accept Jesus Christ as a son of, as a son of God. Okay? And uh, with that ignorance, they will end up there. And for lack of knowledge, people perish. The five compartments of hell, we talk about Tartarus. Tartarus, the place of the fallen angels, where the fallen spirits are chained. They're chained there until the final judgment. From there, they'll be judged and be, be, be cast straight into the lake of fire. And then there's a compartment that was called uh, Abraham Bosom, which was a paradise of old. The paradise of old. All the saints who died in faith under the old covenant, they were there in that place called paradise or Abraham's bosom, a compartment in hell or a compartment in Sheol or Hades. The, 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 that's the other name for other names for it, the Hebrew and the Greek. And they were there awaiting, awaiting their hope awaiting the promise, the promises that was made for them. They all died in faith, believing that one day the Messiah will come and shed his blood 
and with his blood redeemed them because animal, animals' blood could not take them to heaven. It was only a covering and atonement for their sins. And with that hope, they died in faith, believing that the Messiah would come. And Jesus, after he died on the cross, he went to the grave. He went in the grave. He went into hell and he preached to them and said, here am I. Amen. Amen. And he delivered them three days after. That's the place called Abraham's bosom. And now that paradise of old is empty. It's no longer paradise because paradise shifts from earth to heaven in the presence of the Lord right now. And then you have Hades or Sheol again, the same compartments, but two different places. Abraham's bosom and Sheol or Hades, the grave or the, 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 the hell rather. In the Old Testament it's called uh, Sheol. In the New Testament it's, it's Hades where the spirit of the wicked, the wicked dead, uh, that's where the spirit, the spirit are. So we know that they are still there to this very day. And they'll remain there until the great white throne judgment. They'll be resurrected for that judgment and then be cast into the lake of fire. Okay? They're going to they're gonna stay there all through the tribulation, after the rapture, all through the millennium, and then be resurrected after the thousand years. And that, that's the place called Sheol or Hades. They are there up till this very time. Okay? Now, then there's the abyss. The abyss... As we learn in Genesis chapter 2, that was Tahom, meaning the abyss where God created after Lucifer's uh, fall, he became Satan. And the earth was in judgment and the earth was covered with water and that was upon the face of the deep. And so judgment came upon the face of the earth and that place was created for Satan, became the prince of the powers of darkness. So abyss is Satan's holding cell or the bottomless pit when he'll be cast there for a thousand years. Right now, somebody asked a question. The, the, other day, the, the other day, they said, um, where, how could Satan be in hell and be here at the same time? Satan is not in hell. He's roaming the earth right now. He's roaming the, the, the cosmos and the galaxies. He cannot go into heaven, but he's going into the, one of the heavens. There are three heavens. Okay? The earth atmosphere, the cosmos, and the abode of God. The third heaven is where Paul, the apostle, went. So the cosmos and the earth atmosphere, he's roaming there. He's the prince of the powers of the air. Prince of darkness, powers of darkness, you roam in the earth, and the day is going to come. Very soon, the Bible tells us he'll be cut down to the earth, no longer have access up there. And when, he, when he's cast down to the earth, according to Revelation 12, he will know that his time is short. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down, knowing that the, his time is short. Okay? That is in future. That's going to happen very soon. When that happens, the church will not be here. And ima imagine the Holy Spirit in us will be out of here. And ima imagine you're living here. With Satan here on the earth and no Holy Ghost operation as, it, as he is now. So while you are experiencing the grace of God, enjoy it. Amen. By grace are you saved. Grace will come to an end after the rapture. Then it would not be the gospel of grace. It will be the gospel of the kingdom. Do you understand that? So the ab abyss, that, that, that holding cell, that bottomless pit is there for Satan. And then the final judgment will be the lake of fire. The eternal destiny of all wicked spirits, all wicked spirits, all wicked spirits, including the spirits of the spirit of men, spirits of men, and fallen angels, the devil, and even Satan. All wicked demonic spirits, the spirit of spirit of the spirits of men will be cast into that lake of fire called Gehenna. That's the finality of it. Church, that is that should be a basic understanding in the life and mind of every single Christian believer. Teach your children these things from now. Teach everybody in your home this. That we need to understand this so we can uh, preach this gospel. We can promote this gospel, promulgate this gospel in a manner that people understand that there's a true God, a true heaven, a true hell, and that we have an opportunity to make a decision to choose where we want to spend eternity. Amen. Amen. So we have learned, number six, we have learned that the sinner, the sinner's complete body, soul, and spirit will be in hell's fire, never to die or to be physically annihilated. We learn that after his resurrection and judgment at the white throne judgment of God. We know that he'll be cast into the lake of fire. Okay, now, Jesus' warning is very important for us to understand. His warning of the, he, he gives us his warning of the reality of hell. The reality of hell. You see, the reality of hell will put a godly fear 
that godly fear is not for you to be afraid of God, but for you to reverence the sovereignty of God and the power of God, the dominion of God, of, for who He is. He's not a God made by hands. He's not a God made by man's assumption or presumption. He's a, he is God who is sovereign, and we have to seek to know Him. We cannot make something and try to find out and research what we make and see what we can get out of that to prove that that is God. We have to seek Him, and He will be revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this is why we need to seek Him revelationally. Now, the Bible tells us of a man who went to a wedding and the master of the wedding noticed that this man was wearing, was not wearing the right clothing. And in this parable, the Lord gives us a, a clear insight of how important it is for us human beings to prepare ourselves for that great day that is coming, that great day of redemption, when we will be drinking from that cup of redemption. Remember we talk about that? And so in that parable, he had not prepared himself in the context of that parable, he was expounding, Jesus was expounding the importance of preparation. He said this man was not prepared if, to go to this wedding. And you know when there is a wedding, you want to buy the best clothes and you want to look different than your custom looking. I thank God when I have to do a wedding, it's the same suit I'm wearing. Because I'm always dressed. There's one way. I don't, let me tell you something, church. Don't wait till the rapture comes, then to put on the rapture clothing. Don't wait till the marriage is supposed to put on. You have to start wearing it from now. Come on with me now. When the bridegroom is going for the bride, the bride ought to be dressed and waiting. Come on, he's coming for her. She has to be dressed and waiting. You have to understand that. So this, this Jesus was saying here, he was talking about the lack of preparation. So he had, no, he had not prepared himself to go to this wedding. And he had not washed. He was not dressed. He was inappropriate at a beautiful wedding. So God has designed specific garments for us to wear for this wedding that is coming up. So, and we learn in the story that the master of the wedding told the servant to take him, bind him, and cast him out where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Understand that. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is a reference to hell. Okay? And the hell we are talking about there is not just only the, um, the torment in the flames, but the finality of, of it, Gehenna itself. But you're going through torment from the day you die, you'll face torment if you don't know Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I tell you this, I tell you this is how it would be for those who are not ready for the coming of the Lord. So the, what, what he implied was we ought to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. And so he was saying here, that this man was not ready for his coming. We ought to be ready for the coming of the Lord, and we have to be ready to die anytime. Amen? So this man was not ready for the coming of the Lord and was not ready to die. You know what Revelation 21 8 tells us? Revelation 21, 21 it says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the homongerers, and all sorcerers and idolaters and, and li all liars shall have their part. In the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Church, we have to be ready when we die or when the rapture, or if the rapture should take place, we have to be ready for both events. I didn't get an amen. I said we have to be ready for both events. People don't like to hear, talk about dying. It's too negative. But it's so negative, you, don't want, to, you want to ignore it. But when, you, when you're driving the highway every day, you see a who's passing. You cannot ignore reality, folks. You cannot deny the absolute. I walk in through the corridor to go to the hospital today, and I was hearing some woman screaming. And while I was screaming, somebody just passed away. Right in the, in the waiting room there. People are dying every day, and they are ending up somewhere. Somewhere. You get all the parties and all the joy, and you can be enjoying every, all the goodies in life. You'll have to die one day. So whatever you enjoy, you have to understand the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so Jesus, he tells us how it would be for those who die, who are not ready for the coming of the Lord or not ready uh, to die. Revelation 21. Now, he was talking about 
unprepared. Unprepared for eternal life in heaven. They die unprepared for eternal life in heaven. Or the rapture took place and they were unprepared for eternal life in heaven. You know, the greatest fear, the greatest fear I have for somebody is for, some, for somebody to die without Christ. The greatest fear on the earth today is not afraid of dark places or afraid of the dead. Is I am I am I'm fearful for people dying without Christ. You hear me tonight. If you have to die, don't die without Jesus. And if you live, live to gain. Amen. Live for Christ. He's talking about unwashed. The man, the unprepared, unwashed. Unwashed. Implying people are unwashed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You die unwashed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Unprepared for eternal life in heaven. Unwashed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Undressed without a garment of righteousness. Romans 5.17 tells us that we have received the abundance of grace. Look what it says. For if by one man's offense... Death reigned by one man. That man is Adam. Death reigned by one man. How much more? They which receive abundance of grace. See, abundance of grace. And the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Who is that? Jesus Christ. By one Jesus Christ. So here we have, we have it. We want to dress with the robe of righteousness and do not take it off. Christians ought not to undress. Amen. Stay dressed. Stay dressed. Don't look at me so serious tonight. Am I speaking the truth? You ought to keep your righteous garment on at all times. It's like keeping your light, your lamp all trimmed and oiled and ready and waiting. It can happen any moment. As I said, as I said a while ago, he's coming back for the righteous. This time he's come back not, he's come back without sin. 